This is Dr. Akuk Slanen, and we're going to be addressing the concept of pain. When we look at pain as it pertains to an injury, it forces us into a compensation because tissues in the area have become sensitized. And when they become sensitized, we typically don't want to move them because they're sore. The difficult thing about pain is it doesn't just stay with us when we're in the gym and then go away. It can affect our roles in society, family, work, hobbies. So if you're noticing that you're starting to develop some limitations as well as some increased pain responses, I've got some good news coming your way. So none of us ever wants to be on a movement diet. Much the same as if you're on a nutritional diet where you are eliminating certain foods that may be taking you further away from your goals. Being on a movement diet is when you begin to make concessions or sacrifices to things you could once do but can no longer do. Typically when we're looking at pain, we're looking at it from several different ways, either from a muscular perspective or a capsular perspective, such as the big joints of the body. The big joints of the body become a little bit tricky because they're coated with a cartilaginous material, which allows the bony ends to slide and glide relative to one another. And what ends up happening over time is slowly by little, we start to wear down the cartilage end plates on the ends of each of our bones much the same as a car that slowly starts to wear out its brake pads, we slowly start to develop degenerative changes and these can become arthritic changes such as osteoarthritis, degenerative disc disease, or we can start to have meniscal problems, typically in our, our big joints like our knees and our shoulders. So now let's talk about the brain-body connection as it pertains to pain and how we can get our bodies away from pain. The brain communicates to the body based upon the input that it receives from the environment. What you do for a living and where you're living and all the things that make you, you, matters. Everything adds up. When there's trauma, it could be a accumulating microtrauma, such as a sprain strain like a carpal tunnel syndrome of somebody using the keyboard for far too long who has a desk job, or macro trauma, like maybe slipping on some wet grass and twisting your knee. Your body begins to lose the connection between the brain and body because pain slowly starts to act as a disruptor. What ends up happening is an inflammatory response occurs and this inflammation settles in and begins to further dampen the signal between the brain-body connection. And this can be sometimes why recovery takes as long as it does. Sometimes medication like Tylenol or Advil can get a jump on pain, but oftentimes if we don't remove ourselves from the environment or the environment that caused the pain in the first place, this can also slow down healing and prolong the inflammatory response. So for example, the office worker or the construction worker who continues to return to the same environment that caused their pain previously, they'll find that it doesn't matter how many Advil or Tylenol that they take, they'll slowly start to notice that they're increasing their dosage and they're becoming more and more in pain. So we need to flip the script on that. So what we need to do is we need to get ahead of inflammation rather than just trying to keep pace with it. So I'll give you an analogy. If it were about to snow a lot and you were gonna get 24 inches of snow, two inches every hour, it will be to your advantage to get out there with a sweeper broom and sweep off the steps an inch or two at a time over the course of the snowstorm, as opposed to trying to outmuscle it one time after all the snow has fallen with a shovel because now the broom's not going to work. So the take home is we need to do the small things right and often, and we need to not rely on NSAIDs to do the job for us. So obviously there are many benefits to staying ahead of inflammation. You're gonna get improved healing times, decongestion of the area, reduce localized swelling, as well as pain, and this is all gonna promote movement. Ultimately, what you're looking for is working towards pain-free movement. You wanna get the garbage out, and you wanna bring the groceries in. This is how we're gonna establish the brain-body connection. If we fail to prioritize the brain-body connection, as well as the neuromuscular connection that this pathway uh, works with, you're gonna affect soft tissue healing times, you're gonna delay the reduced inflammatory response, and you're gonna lengthen the recovery time, which is the opposite of what you want. So how do we get input back into the system? So when you have altered balance or an altered state of biomechanics, we need to find a way to get input into the system. And this comes from select exercises that target the muscles, as well as the ligaments and the tendons that need to cooperate and do the work. When this occurs, it strengthens the brain-body connection and it strengthens those neuromuscular pathways. This is gonna have a positive result of improved joint stability, improved strength, greater pain-free range of motion, as well as quicker response times to pain, meaning that should pain occur, your body is likely to get away from pain and over pain much sooner. So are there nutritional as well as environmental factors that can help promote healing? And the answer is, of course, yes there is. We know that consuming more water helps to decongest the inflamed areas, 
as well as promote uptake and reabsorption of the inflammatory markers that are not supposed to be there. Remember, we use that analogy of garbage out and bring the groceries in. The lymphatic system is considered the sewage system of the body. If you have reduced global body hydration, it'll make the sister work harder because it's going to be more sluggish, which is gonna ultimately allow inflammation to hang around a lot longer than you'd like. Maintaining nutrition is also important. You wanna make sure that you're staying on top of protein, which is gonna to help to maintain protein synthesis, which will offset muscle wasting or sarcopenia, as well as promote cartilage, tendon, and ligament repair. Adequate carbohydrate consumption is gonna provide your body with the necessary energy to allow it to adapt and to heal. And when it comes to sleep, you're gonna to wanna to seek roughly eight to nine hours each evening to help accelerate the healing process. Many times we see people do the opposite and they end up sleeping less. Whether it's from pain or many a night of restless sleep, this has a negative impact on the overall healing process. So do your best and try to get as much sleep as possible.